So today we're going to look at sunsets and specifically how what we observe in reality contradicts what we would expect to see on a flat earth. Here is a small torch sitting on the carpet in the hotel room and I'm going to walk to the other side which I paced out at around 13 meters which is close to 40 feet. Now flat earthers will tell you that if you put your eye to the ground and watch a person walking away their feet will begin to disappear. Let's put that theory to the test. I have the phone oriented so that the camera is at the bottom. Therefore, it will be as low as possible when I place the camera on the floor. So we're now at around 40 feet distance from the light and I'm moving the phone down to rest it on the floor. I'm going to zoom in and as you can see that light is clearly visible it has not disappeared at all just to prove that the camera is as low as possible there is my finger so over 40 feet of flat surface with the camera as low as possible and the light source as low as possible, nothing disappears. Now I have similar demonstrations in previous videos and one of the claims flat earthers make is that I didn't have the camera low enough to the floor. But that is completely flawed because I can also observe a sunset very easily from an altitude of 40,000 feet and higher in an aircraft. To make matters worse, in my first demonstration, the torch was touching the floor. The flat earthers don't claim that the sun is touching the ground. They claim it is above a flat earth. So I now have that torch on the seat, as you can see. And with the phone still on the ground as low as possible, that torch is clearly visible and not even close to disappearing. Here is a sunset I filmed from the cockpit of the aircraft the other day while we were descending into Broome and the altitude was around 16,000 feet and I know that from the distance of 47 nautical miles to Broome Echo Charlie even though I didn't quite manage to capture the altitude. As I look left we can see the sun is clearly setting and I adjust the exposure value a number of times to show you how that changes the apparent size and then I zoom in. And we are quite fortunate that the internal reflection in the camera is showing us the true size of the sun and the fact that half of it has disappeared below the horizon. The actual sun itself is too bright and the glare is making it appear larger than it really is. But the internal reflection is giving us an accurate size and shape of the sun. And as you can see, half of it is hidden by the horizon. Now we are clearly looking out across water. There are no trees or mountains or waves that high that could be blocking the sun. Now flat earthers love to use the word perspective to explain why the sun appears to set. But that only tells me that they don't really understand what perspective is. As you can see in this diagram, we have a horizon line. We have an object above the horizon and we have two objects below the horizon. Now, due to perspective, the further away that object becomes, it will appear smaller, but at no point will that object above the horizon go below the horizon. It simply shrinks to the point where we cannot resolve it any further. And that is called the vanishing point. That is when it is so far away that we cannot actually resolve the angular size of the object. At no point does the object beneath the horizon go above it and at no point does an object above the horizon go below. And this creates two insurmountable problems for flat earth. Number one, we should observe the sun shrinking progressively in size as it moves further away from us. When observed with a solar filter, 
we don't see that at all. The size does not change as the sun is setting. And the second problem is that if the sun were disappearing due to reaching the vanishing point, we would not see the top half of it very clearly above the horizon. We would never see it slide without changing size down below the horizon as we do any time we observe the sun setting over water. And this is again one of my own observations. As you can see, the width of the sun does not change, so it is not moving away from us at all. So let's take another look at perspective by taking a short train ride. And we actually do this quite often because my daughter Emma just loves trains. And in this clip, she was so excited because there were two departing the station at the same time and she wasn't sure which one to wave and blow kisses at. So I'll play this clip from the train now and it is a beautiful demonstration of perspective because you can see the lights here you can see the features on the tunnel wall. They all disappear to a vanishing point, but the lights never go below the center point. And furthermore, they change in size dramatically as they get closer to us. And also, the apparent rate of movement changes significantly. So notice the movement of the lights and compare that to the motion of the sun as it was actually setting. Completely different. What we observe in reality is nothing like we would expect on a flat earth due to perspective. So before playing my last clip, I just want to give a long overdue shout out to Bobby Shafto. He has some fabulous videos on his channel, many of them touching this same topic of objects not disappearing across a flat surface. He does a number of experiments, and I just noticed that he posted a video relating to the changing weight with latitude recently. So I look forward to watching that myself shortly. Head over to Bobby's channel. I'll post a link in the description below. So the next clip is an observation I made some time ago across 40 metres of very flat hangar floor. And again, I have the camera, a P900 this time, resting on the ground. And we can see clearly that across a truly flat surface, nothing is hidden. So I'm sorry, Flat Earthers, but your explanation that perspective causes the sun to set is complete nonsense. You need to come up with a better theory that accurately explains why we observe the sun setting without changing size. Good luck with that. So I'm currently in a hangar that has an extremely flat floor and looking across about 40 metres of distance to some witches hats on the floor. You can see that when I zoom in, nothing is hidden and we can clearly see the gap underneath the witches hats. Zooming out now. and zooming back in. You can see on a truly flat surface, nothing is hidden. And the other problem for flat earthers is that I have my camera right down on the floor 
and we're looking at an object that is also touching the floor and it is not hidden. When I'm in an aircraft at 45,000 feet altitude and higher looking at the sun, I can still see that sun setting behind the horizon. So how is that possible if nothing disappears on a flat surface? There is a small torch and as you can see it is clearly well above the hangar floor. How far away would that have to move to seem to disappear behind the floor? And how small would it get before that occurred? And yet when we observe sunsets, the sun remains the same size as it drops below the horizon. And this is what happens on a truly flat surface. Nothing is hidden. And just to prove that my P900 is on the ground, I'm now recording with my mobile phone also, just to confirm that the P900 is on the ground. I'm now recording with my mobile phone also, just to confirm that the P900 is on the ground.